Raven, I do wish you'd sit down and try to eat something. I ordered that lovely lunch from room service and you haven't touched it. I'm still too upset to eat. Well, I think you should try to force down a little something. Liver. You know I hate liver. I know, but it has a lot of iron in it and I think that's what you need. What I really need is a little tranquility in my life. I am sick and tired of being the victim to these con games and kidnappers and international intrigues. Do you realize that I've had more adventure in one month than most people have in a whole lifetime? I know. I've often wondered what it is in you that invites these bizarre happenings. I don't invite them. They just happen to me. I'm still not quite sure what did happen. I already told you it was the stupid key in the safety deposit box, which I shouldn't have opened in the first place. And it took two keys to open it. Oh, yes, and Spencer kindly gave me the contents of the box, a stupid diary. You can hardly blame Spencer. Oh, well, of course. It was worthless to him. It was just a bunch of scribblings which no one understood. Oh, well, apparently someone didn't think it was worthless and that you could understand it. And who was that someone? A man who comes to me and tells me he's an agent for the CEA and he takes me to some deserted house and tries to kill me. My dear, you can just be grateful that it was Ian Devereaux's home and that he came home in time to get you out of that mess. That's true. Ian was very sweet. An attitude that was a lot better than some people we know. Some people? Yes, I won't mention any names, just people like Sky Whitney. Oh. Ian, though. Hmm. Ian? Well, you don't expect me to call him Mr. Devereaux after he saved my life, do you? No, I suppose not. You know, it's very strange that Ian and Skye knew each other. Yes. Actually, uh, the name Devereaux rang a bell. Uh, but I couldn't quite place it until he and Skyler greeted each other so effusively. And then I remembered. Uh, the Devereaux family was very close to Skyler's father at one time. Although I didn't know them well myself. Well, Ian certainly is attractive. He is indeed. Yeah, he's the kind of man that just sort of takes charge, you know? He certainly proved that last night. Mm-hmm. He's a gentleman, too. Unlike your nephew. <laughs> really, Raven. From now on, I'm going to have to put you and Skylar in separate nurseries. Hello. Miss Alexander, it's Nora. Yes? I just heard Mr. Whitney tell Gunther to bring the car around. He's coming over to see you right now. Oh, really? How interesting. But I have a word of caution. <laughs> he happens to be after something again. What does he want this time? The diary. Oh, oh, really? Well, I certainly have a surprise from Mr. Whitney. Damn frustrating, Mike. Come so close to this phony character and not be able to get our hands on him. Where do you think he is now, the elusive George Foley? We don't know, of course, but all the machinery of the police department is geared to finding him. They'll come up with something, David. My hunch is he's still in this area. Yeah, well, I agree. He hasn't found what he's looking for as yet. That must be frustrating for him, too. Well, he almost fell into his own trap last night, thanks to Ian Devereaux's return. What do you suppose made Foley think he could get away with it? Well, he'd been very successful up to the debacle of last night. Uh, to begin with, he and his accomplice did a good job of deceiving Devereaux. Have they identified the woman yet? No. No, they pawned themselves off as husband and wife, but who knows. That's how they got the job as caretakers of Devereaux's estate, as domestic help. Very neat. Devereaux had no way of knowing that they weren't legitimate. They forged a letter from an employment agency and letters of reference. So, there they were, comfortably running their mysterious affairs out of his house while he was off in Europe. Yeah, it must have been quite a shock for him to come home and find all that going on under his own roof. It's a damn good thing he returned when he did. Otherwise, George Foley would be facing a murder rap for the killing of Raven Alexander. Yes, well, thank God for that. In the meantime, Foley and his companion have fled their cozy little nest uh, for parts unknown, and we're back where we started from. No, not really. The police are spreading a wider net now. And they've got a better description to work with. In fact, they're putting together a composite sketch that should be very helpful. Well, I hope something breaks soon. I can't stay in Monticello too much longer. David, 
There's something I'd like to suggest, if I may. Um, there's one other person I think you should meet before you go back to Washington. Damien Tyler. Well, you're right, Mike, I should. Uh, I've intended seeing Tyler before I leave Monticello. It, well, frankly, I've been putting it off to the last minute. I imagine you can guess why. Yes, I think I can. Well, I don't mind admitting it. I have strong feelings of personal guilt about Wilcox. That's why Tyler is the last person I, I want to face. I know very well he blames me for what happened to his father. Well, I'm sure he'd appreciate knowing that you believe his father might have been innocent, after all. This machine is going to drive me crazy. What you need is a little practice. It's amazing. How do they figure they can put the human mind against the mind of a computer? Mm -hmm. Then why do I keep losing? What am I doing wrong here? Well, who says your brain is human, Eddie? What are you doing busting in here like that? You know you got some nerve? Come on, be nice. You could be a little more sociable than that. I'm not in the mood to be sociable to no cop. Well, considering your background, that's understandable. Mind if I sit down? And if I said I did, would it make any difference? Thanks. So, I see you've got a lot of time on your hands, wasting it playing that stupid game. This is not a waste of time. This is an exercise in intellectual capacity for the human brain. I'm sure you could use the exercise. That's very funny. That's very funny. Coming from you, a mental midget cop of all people. And besides, I've got lots of things to do to keep me busy. Oh, come on, you're not kidding me. You just had your Eden connection pulled out from under you. You said what? So what's the big deal? So I get a new connection. Next. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to find a lots in a nice, lucrative place like this. Hey, what's wrong with this joint? I make a very nice living here, very nice. You know, Eddie, uh, frankly, I'm really sorry that you did have the Eden rug pulled out from under you. I mean, I genuinely feel awful about it. Yeah, I can see you're all choked up. It gets you right here, don't it? Come to think of it. Somebody else got you right there, too, didn't they, huh? You know, what I really feel bad about is not being able to bust up some of that artwork of yours. I mean, I think I might have found some very interesting things inside. Marijuana, hard drugs. Why don't you get off my case? You ain't got nothing on me. So why don't you just take a walk? Well, maybe I should have been just a little bit more explicit. This is actually an official investigation into the demise of your uh, lamented colleague, Joe Boomer. Well, if this is an official investigation, I suggest you investigate Damien Tyler. Why don't you ask yourself some questions? Because if I recall properly, it was your greasy finger that pulled the trigger that killed my lamented friend, Joe Boomer. That was self-defense in the line oh, of duty. Oh, don't give me that self-defense. By the way, I should thank you for that little move. You saved me a lot of money. In fact, I should give you a little token of my appreciation. Here, why don't you take this lamp home with you, you see? And I'll show you my esteem for the police department. That's a gift. Oh, thanks very much, Eddie. I appreciate this, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to turn it down. It would just be a reminder of the low esteem that you hold members of my profession. Hey, that's very good. Did you figure that out all by yourself? Nobody helped you, huh? And what I'm really curious about is what was uh, Joe Bulmer hitting you up for in the first place? It's very simple. The guy was leaving town and needed cash. So he came here to get cash, only he got greedy. He wanted it all. So he put a gun in my bank and was taking me downtown to open my safe and take all my money, and then you walked in. End of story. Oh, it's that simple, is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just have to accept your story for right now. Look, Eddie, I just wanted to give you a little friendly warning. Well, we know that you're going to be looking for a new source of revenue. I just want you to know that we're going to be keeping a good eye out on you. Hey, uh, sure you don't want the lamp? Thanks, anyway. Come on, Tchaikovsky. I'm going to figure you out now. Damien. Poppy. You just have a meeting with Eddie? Uh, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. You didn't arrest him? No, not this time. Uh, not enough evidence. Plenty of moral evidence, just no legal justification. Well, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'm not sorry. I, I still need this job, you know? Well, Poppy, I'm sorry to say you may not have this job very much longer. Eddie's just lost his Eden connection. I think he's going to lose this place. You know, this would be a perfect time for you to get out of here. Why don't you do it? I can't. Please, don't, don't ask me. I... Poppy, I wouldn't ask you to if I didn't care about you. A lot. Hey, Poppy, the battery and this thing is dead. Gee, that's a real pity, Eddie. 
What are you doing, taking a course in wrestling? Every time I turn around, you two guys are in a headlock. You know, maybe I should have a little chat with Mr. Tyler. We might calm him down if he learns a few things. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I could fill him in a little bit on your background. Maybe that might cool him off a little bit, huh? Yeah, and you would, too, wouldn't you? Here, I hope you get electrocuted. I'm shocked. <laughs> shocked. <laughs> I know. Oh, I really enjoyed lunch. I haven't had you to myself in so long. It was good to catch up with everything that's been happening. Oh, it was nice for me too, Nancy. We should really do it more often. Yeah. Oh, hey, now have a seat and I will get those prints for you. Yeah, I can't wait to see them. You know, I don't remember when those pictures of Mike and me were taken, but, uh... When I came across the negatives, I thought, oh, well, all right, wouldn't it be fun to see what things were like then? It looks the same to me. Huh? Oh, my goodness. No, I don't know if I want to see them. Oh, no, come on. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. No. Oh, my goodness. No. I can't believe that. Oh, no. Oh, Valerie. Oh, my. I remember when this was taken. Oh, my gosh. Will you look at that hairdo? I guess I thought it was attractive. <laughs> it huh? was. It was. Oh, no. Oh, my. Oh, Valerie, these are wonderful. They bring back a lot of memories. Oh, it must be nice to have so many <sighs> happy memories to share with someone. Oh, my goodness. Yes, it is. It is. Well, well, you must be gathering a lot of memories of your own right now. Yeah, but there's a big difference between us, Nancy. <sighs> you found the one man you wanted to share your life with. Huh? I'm afraid I'm not so certain. Not so certain, meaning that you're still seeing Jim, Diedrichson, and Sky with me? Yeah, yeah. And there couldn't be two more different human beings in the entire world. Although, you know, that's not altogether true. There are several similarities between them. Good looks, ambition, charm, warmth, humor. I guess the biggest difference, though, is that Sky has seemed to have found his niche in the world. Well, he was born into that. I know, but Jim is still searching for his, and I really worry about him, Nancy. I don't know how he manages. Well, I thought things were moving around, uh, along rather well with the theater company. Well, actually, they are right now. Um, in fact, Jim and Gavin are at the theater right now, getting ready to launch the first road company production in uh, the Buffy Revere Theater. The what? <laughs> Private joke. Uh -huh. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Crown Photo Studio. Miss Bryson, this is Miss Johnson calling. Oh, hello. I'm calling to confirm the appointment this afternoon of my shy employer. Well, I'm expecting you. Uh, you give me about ten minutes and I'll be all ready. The studio will be cleared out. We'll be there. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Hmm, that's my next sitting, and a rather strange one at that. Oh, how so? Well, the appointment was made by some celebrity secretary. Mm -hmm. And she insists that it be totally private. I mean, she wouldn't even tell me his name. Mm, sounds interesting. Yeah, I just hope I know who it is when I see him. It would be terrible to be a celebrity and then not be recognized. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> I'm going to get out to the office now. Oh, uh, and uh, you. be sure to let me know when you find out about this uh, reluctant celebrity. I'll hmm? give you a call. Thanks for these. Bye-bye. Hey, watch it. Sorry, Nora. <laughs> What's so funny? I was just thinking, you remind me of nothing so much as a prosperous undertaker. Nora, can we dispense with your uproarious humor? Have you seen Mr. Whitney? I hate to tell you this, Spencer, but he just went to meet Raven Alexander. I thought that would raise an eyebrow. It's, just, it's rather odd, considering the circumstances. Not really. See, I have an idea he's trying to make up for the mistake you made. When you gave Raven the diary that belonged to her husband, it just might turn out to be very valuable. Who knows? And if it is, you're in the hot seat because you gave it to her. Oh, not amused? I don't need your opinions, Nora. Well, it's obvious Mr. Whitney was very upset. You never know how these things are going to turn out, you know? 
Edith might be out of a cushy job as business manager if that's how you're going to manage things. You are aware you are still on probation for your own job, Nora, aren't you? You're not threatening to fire me, are you? That's exactly what will happen if you don't learn to mind your own business. And may I add, nothing would give me more pleasure. <laughs> Just wait until Raven Alexander is back in this house, Mr. Business Manager. We'll see who's going to get fired. Ego, putting up her own portrait in Aunt Geraldine's living room. <laughs> I bet she didn't even ask permission. I told Raven you're here, Scott. She'll oh. be out in a minute. Oh, thank you, Geraldine. And now, Scott, I sit right down here, dear. I want to talk to you about something. Oh, let me see if I can anticipate this. You were going to remind me to be courteous and kind and gentlemanly. Something like that. Now, Geraldine, when have you ever known me not to be? I wish you hadn't asked me that. <laughs> Now, you know that I've just been the picture well, of... Well, 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 if it isn't the great man. Hello, Rip. I decided to stop by to see how you were faring after your exploits these past few days. Oh, is that all you wanted? <laughs> I'm trying, Geraldine. I'm making an effort. <laughs> yes, well. Uh, 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 Skyler, is it interesting that you know Ian Devereaux? It must have been a great surprise to both of you meeting again under these circumstances. Oh, yes, it was. I hadn't seen Ian in, in years. Not since... Geez, not since my dad was still alive. We used to be quite close, the Devereaux and the Whitneys. You know, it took me a little time to place him, and then I remembered. You had chummed around together as boys. Oh, yes, I looked up to Ian quite a bit. Uh, he was, uh... He was always getting into exploits, it seemed. He was a few years older, but he seemed so much more mature. Well, Ian must have been a terrific gentleman even then, which obviously is the big difference between the two of you. It's a pity you didn't keep on looking up to him. <laughs> yes. Ian was uh, thought of by many people as being some sort of a genius. He was very clever, very inventive mind. In what way inventive? Oh, well, uh, for example, the Devereaux, the rest of the family, lost all their money. Ian was the only one clever enough to hold on to his. You know, you really have to respect a, a self-made man, as opposed to the people that inherit all their money. And that takes care of round one, if you'll excuse me. Oh, Geraldine, don't go now. Things are just beginning to get interesting. I'm sorry, Scott. I'm in no mood to referee. I can see that I've hurt you. I'm sorry. I didn't think it showed. Raven, I did not come here to do battle with you. I came to apologize, to apologize for all the fuss I made over that diary. It really was unnecessary. As a matter of fact, it was all Spencer's fault. He never should have given it to you in the first place. Oh, I agree. He should have given it to you. There. I knew that we could reach an amicable agreement. Yes, he should have given it to you, because then you would have been the one kidnapped, drugged, and almost murdered. Yes, that was a, an awful thing to have happened. I'm glad to. Ian was so courageous. Ian? You're on first name basis, are you? Oh, come on, Whitney. What do you want? The diary? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, since it has been a cause of so much pain and concern for you, I'd be willing to take it off your hands. Well, good, because then it gives me great pleasure to tell you that the diary is gone. What do you mean the diary is gone? Foley has it. So you can just go find him and get it from him. You gave the diary to Foley. I didn't give the diary to Foley. He took the diary. So now why waste your time standing here? Just get out of my house and leave me alone. Oh, you know, Raven, I am not used to being denied. I what? hate you. Get out of here. You will recall, perhaps, what happened the last time you <gasps> did the... Skyler gone? Yes. I'm glad to see you're somewhat more subdued than when I left you. Raven. When are you going to retire from the ring? Never. At least not until I regain my title. You look rather strange. I do. Come in. Thank you, 
Geraldine. And David, how nice to see you uh, again. Good to see you too, Mrs. Saxon. Raven, this is David Cameron, David. Raven Alexander. Hello, how do you do? How do you do? Mr. Cameron is here from Washington, official with the CEA investigating the Jefferson Brown case and the George Foley connection. And are you sure he is who he says he is? I'm positive, Raven. <laughs> I'm sorry to intrude so soon after your ordeal, Miss Alexander. We were wondering if we might trouble you to look at this police composite of the uh, descriptions we have from George Foley. Oh, yes. That's Foley, all right. Hi. Come in. You're Miss Bryson, I presume. Yes. I'm Miss Johnson. Everything is prepared, I see. Yes, I made all the arrangements, and you don't have to worry, we won't be disturbed. Good. Mr. Foley. Hello, Miss Bryce. Sorry about the deception. But it's necessary that we're not disturbed. 